Today's section is on graphing quadratic inequalities. You'll see quadratic inequalities in one of these four forms you see right here. For less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, so those are our inequalities that include the equal to, you're going to use a straight line, or curve in this case, since we're talking about quadratic functions. For less than, or greater than, you're going to use the dashed line because we don't want to include those in our graph. So we, c we make those dashed. So this is really just the same rules that you're following when you are graphing linear equations and linear inequalities. Also, take note that if we have a less than or equal to or a less than, you're going to shade below the graph. And if it is greater than or equal to or greater than, you shade above. In addition to these rules, you also want to remember the five steps for graphing quadratic equations. I think some of you called it JVT for our direction, axis of symmetry, vertex, y-intercept, and remember, there are some ones that you don't have to find the y-intercept. Um, with If it's in factored form or intercept form, you don't need to do number four. And then finally, fifth, a table of values. So you'll need those five things, along with the rules of where to shade and whether you should use a dotted or dashed line when we're graphing quadratic inequalities. As long as you keep those things in mind, you'll be fine. Okay, so suppose we were given the following system of linear inequalities. So we have two inequalities here. I like to label them A and B. This is easier when you're graphing them. You can tell one from the other. So we can use our five steps. Instead of labeling them 1 and 2, it's just easier if we label them A and B. So let's graph inequality A. So Let's think about it. If it were the equation negative y equals negative x squared plus 4. Okay, we've got it in standard form. Our a is negative 1. Our b is 0 because there's no plain x term. And our c is 4. So our direction is going to be down because a is negative. Our axis of symmetry is x equals 0 because b is 0. 0 divided by anything is always going to be 0. And vertex, okay, if you plug in x for 0, or 0 for x, we have negative 0 squared plus 4, which is just 4. So our, y, our vertex, which is actually just our y-intercept as well, is the point 0, 4. Our y-intercept is always going to be 0, c, so in this case it is 0, 4. And our table of values, because our y-intercept and our vertex are the same, we can't use the y-intercept in this table, but we can put our vertex in the middle, and then we have to put x values on either side. Um, I think 1 is a pretty good number to use because it's pretty easy to calculate. So let's put 1, x is 1. Now then if I plug that into my equation, up here I have one is negative one squared plus four, which is negative one plus four, and that's simply three. So at one, when x is one, y is three. When x is negative one, y is positive three as well. So we've got our table of values, we've got our axis of symmetry, we've got our vertex, let's plot it all and make our graph. Now you can plot your axis of symmetry, the dotted line right here. Um, however, since we're going to be using a lot of dashed lines, I'm not going to require you to draw the axis of symmetry because sometimes that can get to be a bit much on all your graph. So if you want to draw it, if it helps you, by all means, please draw it. If you don't like it, if you don't want to add that extra information, you don't have to. Um, so the, the axis of symmetry would be right there, though, if we had it. Um, let's put our vertex at 0, 4, so that's going to be right here. That's also our y-intercept. And then we have the point negative 1, 3, positive 1, 3. So it would look like that. Now let's look back to we have y is less than or equal to. So we're going to use a straight line. So we bring it down like that, or a straight curve, I should say. It's not a straight line. 
Um, and then we are going to shade below because it's less than. So grab whatever you need to to shade, and you're going to shade below the graph, just like that. So that's our first inequality. Now I'm going to erase that work. Um, you keep it yours if you like. I'm going to erase mine so that we can have all of this on one screen here. Okay, so our second inequality is B, right? If we want to graph that, we have A is 1, B is negative 2, and C is negative 3. So we look at our direction is going to be up. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So in this case, it's negative negative 2, or positive 2, over 2 times 1. And that just simplifies to 1. So x equals 1 is our axis of symmetry. Our vertex is going to be, well, the x-coordinate will be 1. We need to plug that in to find our y-coordinate. So we have y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So that becomes, and I just clicked something on my computer. There we go. Okay, 1, y equals 1 squared. So that's just 1 minus 2 minus 3. That gives us negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. Okay, so our vertex is going to be at 1, negative 4. So you can go ahead and plot that if you want. It's going to be right there. Our y-intercept is always 0, c, when we're in standard form. So in this case, it's going to be 0, negative 3. Go ahead and graph that. Okay. And then if we have our table of values... If we put our vertex here, our vertex is 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, then we want, um, we want the point 2, negative 3. And my number is erased here. Okay. Okay, so we go ahead and plot that. Now if we look at our inequality, it's y is greater than, not equal to, so we're going to use the dashed lines in this case. So we'll have a dashed parabola. And then our inequality is greater than, so we want to shade above that. So take your other shading color, and you're going to shade everything that's above that parabola. Now again we want to either just as we were doing with the linear inequalities and absolute value inequalities we want to indicate the solution. So you can either erase the parts that don't overlap if you're using pencil. So if I was using pencil I would erase this yellow part and this blue part right here. Or if you're using highlighters you can just indicate the green area is the solution. So either one, you can use either method as long as you indicate to the reader or your teacher, which is me, which one, okay, where the solution is. So as long as you indicate that, then you're fine.